And um, there were points where I wanted to completely give up, but there was this little fire inside of me that just kept burning, kept telling me like, keep going, keep going, keep going. And in the end, I found my way. And uh, I think you will too. By the way, I'm gonna go grab another drink. Do you want anything? Not to get you one, but I got you one anyways. <laughs> it makes no sense. You were standing against the side. There's no way that could have happened. You don't have legs. How could you have fallen off? Big day, dude. Big day for you. You've been wanting to be here for a while, yeah? I've been wanting to be here. This is it. You said you you said I asked you. You said you wouldn't go on impulsive, but you would go on the night shift. Is that I true? did. Well, Eli went first. You know what I mean. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Welcome back to the night shift, ladies and gentlemen. You're working late, and so are we. Let's clock in. I'm sitting here tonight with Todd Cooperman. Um, That's me. <laughs> The desk right now is covered with trinkets because we have episode 100 of Impulsive. We're filming tomorrow. Um, wow, I can't believe it. Episode 100. I want to talk about a few other things really quick. Uh, t um, Evan Dwarf Mamba Mamba is not here tonight. I think he's back at the International Dwarfs Convention for the second week in a row. I did hold him. They held him there. Um, but tonight we've got quite an audience. I'll show you guys in a second. We went to a event tonight called the... Uh, Mamba Foundation. Mamba Legend Quavo. Quavo basketball game. It was a celebrity basketball game with uh, players such as Quavo, Two Chains, Floyd Mayweather, Snoop Dogg, YG, MGK. You're forgetting the best. Phone. The Bone Collector. I can't reach it. T turn that off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of those people and our in-house friend Logan Paul. A couple major things happened tonight. Number one, and this is massive. Drum roll. There was an in-house injury. Um, I don't know how to say it, but similarly to his brother this week, Logan Paul, ladies and gentlemen, was severely injured at the game. Um, we we are going to get a quick play-by-play -play with uh, someone that knows him very well, and that is Logan Paul. Uh, he can't make it to the desk, but we're actually gonna cut over to him uh, on the sidelines, and I'm gonna go talk to him for one second. I'll be right back. Peace. Good to see you, Mark. Logan, thanks for coming on the night shift tonight. Thanks, Technically, man. you didn't really even make it on the show, but <laughs> thanks for, thanks for, <laughs> Logan, let me. I, I just, oh, not my pig, bro. Oh, I'm so sorry. My let's penis, come, bro. One of those hard. Let's hold that back up. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to talk to you a little bit about what happened tonight. Now, I like. I saw you were in a. Uh, I'm gonna take my socks off if you don't mind. They're, my feet are real hot. <laughs> uh, I saw that you were in a, a heated one-on-one uh, -on -one with Snoop Dogg. Bro, why is he so long? He's a long. He's like a, a spider, bro. He's, a He's in man. so many places at one time. This is Snoop Dogg playing basketball. I saw that. I thought to myself, wow, an African American Slenderman has somehow made his way onto the court. This is, this is incredible. Now, now I saw there was one very heated play where you had jumped up in the air and you and come down onto uh, your feet, which is it seems pretty normal, I guess. But something had happened to one of your legs. Now. Why don't you take it away and tell us what I was happened. I was chasing the ball because Floyd Mayweather was about to get it and something just popped in the back of my leg and I was like, fuck man, like I've, I've felt these pops before in my athletic days playing sports and I knew it was bad and I, because, bro, the, the plan was to take it easy. What am I, fucking stupid or just high? You didn't take it easy. 12 days out for the Challenger Games. 12 days. Get get your tickets. Um, is is there a chance that this could affect your ability to, to, to play in the games? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a chance now that Bradley Martin may be crowned the No no, I could I could still be Bradley on one leg, but <clears throat> overall this does if, like I might not even be able to rip, bro, like I don't even want to say that. No, nah, I'm confident. I'm confident, bro. I'm icing, I got icy hot on. 
I'm gonna massage it. Now I also see that when, when these kind of things happen to you, you like to focus on having a really good diet. Um, what are some <laughs> of the foods that you've eaten tonight after the injury happened? It's, I'm, if I'm being honest, bro, like I, I'm like kind of depressed right now. It's been like the worst day of the year for me. And, this, and I'm, so this is just my like sad food. You know what I'm saying? I understand. It's been a shitty day. I wish I could say the internet feels for you, but they don't. But Logan, <laughs> uh, hey, thanks. Oh. I oh. am oh. so sorry. Logan, thank you so much for the check-in. I really hope you are able to uh, pull it together. Thanks. Wow, that kid, a I real friend of mine. Have you met Logan? No. Oh, too bad, he's a great guy. But I have seen him. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> number two uh, happening from the, um, this, this is wild, guys. This is crazy. Our cameraman, the German immigrant, David, was oh, assaulted verbally and physically by Tiana Taylor. I saw you trying to come out. What's happening here? Oh, no. Don't take a picture. Relax, man. Don't take a picture. All right, the youngest ducker in this crew. All time, all the sports academy. Now, uh, David, get on, on for this one. Give us a rundown. So originally we were, David I know doesn't join, can I have that water please? David doesn't uh, usually join, he's usually manning no, the camera. This is a no, serious man. operation and obviously we have to have the world's best doing it. Um, what happened? What? I saw the footage! Wow! First off, I was minding my goddamn business, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can tell you. It wasn't Tiana, by the way. It wasn't Tiana? Well, we're going to keep that as Tiana just for the views, okay? Thanks. Thanks, man. <laughs> also, you're All right. Good. So, out of nowhere, she literally just came up and she was like, You're not taking photos of me. I'm going to just take this and throw it away. Did she try to grab your camera? She grabbed it. Okay. And then I hit the other guy next to me because I was like pulling it. And then he got it in his face. And then everyone went crazy. And even Logan noticed it. And then the camera was on me. And then it went wild. <sighs> What do you do as a cameraman? What do you do in those kind of situations? Did you think to yourself, maybe I should fall, play did dead? We have, did we have eye contact, Logan, for a second? Bro, I, I was like, help you because I, I had just pulled my hamstring. Otherwise, I oh. was in. No, I was like, whatever. I was just keep saying, who are you, bitch? I just kept saying that. because You were saying that to Logan. No, no. <laughs> I think you'd know him by now. You live in the house. Bitch, and so, do you, do you, do you have... Um, any kind of like PTSD? Like, are you worried to camera the man again? No. Okay, thanks, David. All right, cool. What's up, Tav? What's up? What's up, man? I want to hey, talk man. to you for hey, a second. Buddy. So, ladies and gentlemen, Tav is one of LA's biggest nightclub promoters and also a brand manager for... FaZe Clan. FaZe Clan. Um, Tav, I want to talk to you a little bit about the episode, uh, Grocery Shopping with Banks. Did you see it? No. <clears throat> Say you're a guy and you roll to the club with no girls. What's the best way to get in? And uh, you don't know Tav. To and you're be in New York real with you, do you have any money in your pocket? Me personally, I no, have no person, money. The, person, I make the, absolutely the one no guy, money. the one guy. Hypothetically, the man has money in his pocket. All right, so he whips out a hundred. A hundred. Franklin, a hundo, hundo, right? Whatever you call yep, that yep, nowadays, yep. a bill, and then you give it to the security guard. Is that called greasing the bouncer? It might be might greasing be the new, wheels. There might be a new uh, slang for it, but uh, yeah, greasing the bouncer. Once you grease up the bouncer, you know you're good to get in. Hundred bucks, maybe throw him two hundred. That that's tough. Maybe a quick little that pee -pee seems touch. like a lot of money for a for a for a club experience. Is there any other way that you can get in? Maybe a sneak in the side Maybe door. There is a side door at Warwick. You jump around the back. Don't don't let anybody know. Eli might get mad if I tell you. So speaking of Warwick, what is the best club in LA right now, other other than Warwick? Poppy. You know what I mean? Poppy Mondays? Yeah, yeah. Poppy Mondays. Without without Poppy Mondays, there'd be no nightlife. So if, the, if you're watching this show right now and you're in LA on a Monday Pull night. What, and by the way, I got to ask this, and Logan asked it a lot, and so do some of the other people that come to the house from time to time. Why is Monday night such a club night? Doesn't it seem like a ni good night to sleep, watch some movies, golf repeatedly? People in nightlife that come out are fucked in the head. They, yep. like, they like to come out on the worst nights. Like Christmas Eve is a night that everyone likes to come out and get fucked up. Like usually you should be with your family, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not a Christian, but I'm very Jewish. And yeah. I know the Jews like to get fucked up every holiday there is. <laughs> so that's just when I'm fasting. But at the same time, I'm drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, <laughs> who is your favorite celebrity to party with at the club? I've seen you party with some celebrities at the club. Evan Dorf Mamba. He's my actual Everyone favorite. loves he Evan, no. Everyone loves Evan. What is it about Evan? He's the best. He, just, he can drink, 
He can. He, you've never seen him break dance? I've seen him do everything. He does the I'm, head I'm spin so perfectly. Question for you. Yep. Evan walks into the club tomorrow. He's six foot four. I wouldn't hang out with him. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm starting to understand what's going on here. I hate to have to do this, but we have a correction from last week. On last week's episode five, I had titled Grocery Shopping with Banks, the first installment of remedial tasks. Um, huge difference between remedial tasks and what YouTuber user at Notorious Joe called out as menial tasks, which is what it should have been called um, as a punishment for such a stupidity. Here's a list of the top 10 other times I was wrong in my life. Number 10, the time I trusted birth control as a sole contraceptive when I was 16 for over 2,200 sexual encounters with the same girl claimed the effectiveness rate was 100% when it was really only 99%. Boy, that 1% can really screw you. You ever got a girl pregnant? Twice. What'd you end up doing? Abortion. Do you feel like a murderer? No. Number nine, the first and all the way through the 22nd time I said the following statement. Mom, I've got this under control now. I'm only doing Oxy on the weekends. I was wrong. Every one of those times. Yeah, my mom would beat the shit out of me. Number eight, the time I told my microeconomics teacher, Mrs. Chow, to eat a dick. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Chow, still. <laughs> Number seven, the time I uh, thought I could bring the snowmobile off path into deep powder during a winter tour of Yellowstone National Park with the family. I flipped the snowmobile and another member of the tour called me a doorknob. And I asked him, uh, sir, do you really want to die in a national park? It was a family trip. It was the worst thing that could, it was terrible. Number six, the time I told my mom I didn't have to go to college because I had a Kirby Puckett rookie card and I was never going to have to work again. That, that did not work out. <laughs> number, number five, the time I uh, told my friends I could drive home after partying and not sleeping for three days and I drove my Infiniti G35 into a ravine on the side of I-95 in New Haven, Connecticut. I have pictures, I'm showing them here. Thank God I'm alive. <laughs> You're doing good. Proud of you. Number four, the time I told my last girlfriend I didn't need her ass and I'd have a new girlfriend by tomorrow. <laughs> that was in 2010. Number three, the time me and Logan Paul said that Jake faked his ankle injury for views. Once again, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, number two, the time I thought it was just going to be a wet fart while walking around my sister's wedding in oh, rented wow. tuxedo pants. Uh, and number one, thinking I was... Uh, ever going to be able to secure a lifetime of buttery toast off YouTube ad revenue. Uh, God dang, I just don't can't make any money on this channel, dude. Like, what am I going to do? I'll censor your swear words, bro. Censor the swear words? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coming from the cleanest and most well-respected. <laughs> bro, bro, I'm back on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so speaking of uh, poop rockets, let's head over to Toilet Time with Spencer. Take it away, Spence. Um... Wow. Are you just in a sauna? You're sweating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> Thanks, Spencer. Uh, we've also got another new segment tonight, uh, and I, I'm, I'll be honest, I am really excited about this one. It's called The Poet's Corner. Wow. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. Hello. Welcome to The Poet's Corner. Tonight I've prepared a short piece I've called Lydia. Bottles on bottles, 1942, Dom P and some aces. Hundreds of bottle girls with all different faces. I'd seen every one from Brooklyn to Vegas. Most of their asses were completely outrageous. This one was different from her head to her toes. I knew right away she wasn't just one of the hoes. She packed twin cannons the size of Dwarf Mamba's head and the way that she moved brought men back from the dead. I said, what's your name? She said, hey baby, I'm Lydia. I smiled, she laughed. She let me hit and take video. I giggled and said, babe, I could never get rid of you. She left in an Uber and I came down with chlamydia. Lydia, why have you done this to me? For over a week, she left me on scene. Finally, she responded with devilish intent. That's what you get when you tip 3%.
you liked it. Uh, I've been I've been drinking this water, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's all good. Well, I'll put some buttery toast. I'll take a bite. Todd, no, I'm not good. If you hop out for one second, I'm gonna bring in a, a couple members of the audience that I want to talk to for a second. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, right, Tom Cooperman, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get a round of applause. You guys can follow Todd Cooperman at Todd T A A V, or uh, just go to Israel at some point. You'll probably see him there. I have two more very special guests tonight. One is the only certified butt model in the world. Her name's Daisy Keach. She's dressed like an Amish woman right now. The other is her extremely angry friend and roommate, at Jess Mars. Uh, Jess, Daisy, could you guys come on, please? Where do I sit? Maybe you guys can sit together. Oh, here, David, David, thank you. Do you have enough butter on here? Yeah, I, I like the butter on my buttery toast. Guys, it, it's, it, first of all, pleasure to have you guys. I've wanted you guys on for a long time now. So here's the deal. I'll close my laptop for this one because this is, this is major. It's serious. The other day, I filmed a, uh, a, a, a vlog with George Janko um, where we got into some drama r related to Did you it. really consider that a vlog? It was more of just an interview, but we got into some drama I don't about. Know I'll be honest with you. I, I I understand that you are a Instagram celebrity, but if you you interrupt me one more time, I'll have you ejected. Okay, <laughs> cut the shit, you Amish lady. So we had we were on George Janko's show, and Jess, your roommate, and and what I thought was best friend. Uh, <laughs> released some some pretty pretty serious bombshells. Okay, I didn't release anything. Uh, let me finish. <laughs> um, and uh, we're gonna roll some of that here, just so you guys are able to understand kind of what happened. That's so funny. Where's right? Daisy? Yeah, she's up north. Uh -huh. her family. She's got a new car. She is By the way, for viewers watching this, she got. Jess's dream no, car. No, we're not putting Jess, that in. Jess no. told her about her we're dream not. car and talked about it for so we're not. long. We're not. And then Daisy no. bought it, dude. She went and bought the exact car with the exact interior. Everything. Oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't no. cut this. Yes, it's too can. great. No, I can't. Imagine oh. you have a great friend and she yeah, buys Yeah, imagine dream like car, your dude. best friend steals your Damn, dream. Damn, Daisy, that's fucked. fucked. She, she didn't tell us she was upset about it. She just told us, you know, she always wanted the car and she seemed really sad and wow. started crying and... Daisy, wow, dude. Uh, we've, we've seen the wrongs that have happened over the past few days. Uh, Daisy has bought Jess's dream car. Uh, didn't even like the car, bought it simply because it was Jess's dream car. Totally. That's um, what happened. Jess, Jess was, was being very sweet about the situation. Tried to talk to Daisy personally. Daisy was unwilling to listen, so she brought it to online. Um, and uh, since then, there's been even more beef. It's just continued to really... Uh, really get worse and worse and so here we are on the show let's let's settle this once and for all okay square up no we'll do it right here all right here's the deal <laughs> first one to tap out loses and go where do i what start do <laughs> Oh, Jess, like right back, Jess. What are you doing? <laughs> you laugh seems slightly evil. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pitch me, weird. <laughs> okay, wait. Can I fix my dress, please? <laughs> We've got a timeout. That's why I'll allow it. We've got a timeout. Time it. <laughs> oh, it's huge! Shake down. Watch the table. All right, she's going for the reverse chokehold. She's got her. She's got her. She's got her in the reverse choke. She's got her in the reverse choke. Daisy, Daisy, stop down. Oh my God, I can't believe it. God, I've never seen such an unlawful play. You actually choked the fuck out of me. No. Well, do we kiss now? I know. Do we make up? Well, let's do a quick after fight. Come over this. To, come to your sides. All right. That was a close battle. I'll be honest. There was a point uh, where I thought Daisy had it. You used an illegal maneuver called no, the fake timeout. Yeah, it was illegal. No, but I didn't but have that, that said, that said, the winner, and still, the shittiest car in LA, Jess Mars. Congratulations.
Daisy, enjoy your Porsche. <laughs> Jess, enjoy the victory. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching The Night Shift. Uh, we'll be back again next week with more of everyone's favorite nightly news show. <laughs> can you check? Can we check in with Logan, please? <laughs> hey, hey, don't bud. do that. Don't do that. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Hey.